My dear students, have you ever wondered how God has created the plants and animals on this earth? It is quite a complicated matter, right? Well, sometimes it is beyond human knowledge to understand the secrets of his creation, the cause, the reason and the effect. But the human brain is so intense that it has exuberant energy and power to drill down to the techniques of recreation. In today's world, where man has been exploiting nature to make a better living for himself, it is crucial to understand the after effects of non-existence of nature. Scientists have been proving the fact over time that if man does not stop his thirst for exploitation and very soon there will be a day when man will have nothing to eat on earth. It is terrifying, right? Well, at least we do not have to be much worried now. Thanks to the scientists and biotechnologists who have been conducting experiments to enhance the growth of plants and tissues over since the beginning of 19th century. In today's session, let us first explore how the discipline of plant tissue culture evolved in history and then familiarizing the important terms and concepts involved in plant tissue culture. Exactly it began uh, when the German botanist Gottlieb Haberland recognized as the father of tissue culture developed the concept of in vitro cell culture. He proposed the theoretical basis for tissue culture based on his experiments on the culture of single cell on an artificial medium in the year 1902. From that he predicted one could successfully cultivate embryos from vegetative cells and this clearly established the concept of totipotency. Perhaps the earliest step towards plant tissue culture was made by Henry Laus Dumal du Monsi in the year 1756. who during studies on wound healing in plants observed callus formation. Extensive microscopic studies led to the independent and almost simultaneous development of the cell theory by Sleden in the year 1838 and Schwann in the year 1839. Sleden and Schwann put forward the so called totipotency theory which says that cells are autonomic and in principle are capable of regenerating to give a complete plant. Their theory was in fact the foundation of plant cell and tissue culture. Sachs in the year 1882 envisaged that plants synthesize organ forming substances which are polarly distributed. In many an occasion new discoveries in biology have refashioned the trends of thoughts and comprehension. Such landmarks contributed by several brilliant minds need to be known particularly in the context of the beginning and the growth of tissue culture. Let us see the chronological order of inventions now. In the year 1904, Henning isolated mature embryos of crucifers and successfully grew them to mature on mineral salts and sugar solutions. In the year 1922, Coty and Robbins introduced in vitro culture using meristematic cells such as root tip or bud. In the year 1934, White developed a synthetic medium which has later proved to be one of the basic medium for variety of cell and tissue culture. In the year 1939, Catherine, White and Nopcourt introduced medium enriched with growth regulator such as axins, the example is indole acetic acid. In 1941, Van Overbeek demonstrated the stimulatory effect of coconut milk, that is the embryo sac fluid 
on embryo development and callus formation in Datura. In 1944, Skook demonstrated that in vitro cultures of tobacco can be used to study adventitious shoot formation. And in the year 1946, Ball successfully raised transplantable whole plants and explained micropropagation. In the year 1952, Morel and Martin recovered virus free dahlia and potato plants from culture obtained by cultivating the shoot meristem of infected plants. The technique allowed the production of an estimated 4 million genetically identical plants from a single bud within a period of one year. In 1953, Mu demonstrated single cell culture in Nicotiana tapacum. In the year 1955, Miller separated the first known cytokinin from the DNA of herring sperm and named it as kinetin. In 1957, Skook and Miller proposed the concept of hormonal control of organ formation. High concentration of axin promoted rooting and a proportionate quantity of kinetin initiated bud or shoot formation. In the year 1958, Reinert first reported somatic embryo formation from carrot tissue. In 1959, Braun regenerated the first plant from a mature plant cell. In 1959, Gathered again published first extensive handbook in plant tissue culture. Between 1950 and 1960, Nickel made distinguished studies in secondary metabolite production through tissue culture. The first attempt for the industrial production of secondary metabolites in vitro was made in this period by a company called Messrs. Fifi Sir. In 1960, Kanta in India demonstrated successful test tube fertilization in papaver reese for the first time through in vitro pollination. In the year 1960, Cocking produced large quantities of protoplas by using cell wall degrading enzymes called cellulase. In 1965, Vasil and Hyderbrand raised whole plants starting from single cells of tobacco. In 1966, Kuha and Maheshwari in India, they produced haploid datura plant from pollen grains. In 1969, Murasiki and Skook proposed a medium for tobacco tissues. In 1972, Carison obtained first somatic hybrid by fusion of protoplasts isolated from Nicotiana glauca and Nicotiana longistorphy. In 1979, Melchers exhibited somatic hybridization of potato and tomato by protoplast fusion and it was called as pomato. In 1973, Nag and Street reported the possibility of regeneration of plants from carrot cells frozen at the temperature of ultra low temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius in liquid nitrogen. In 1975, Henry and co-workers established technique for obtaining virus-free sugarcane, citrus, potato and cassava. In the year 1980, Vasil and his group demonstrated that embryogenic cultures of most recalcitrant cereals can be established using immature embryos as explants. In 1981, Larkin and Skowcroft proposed the term somoclonal variation. In 1982, Jimmerman fused protoplasts by electrical stimulus. In 1983, Mitsu Petrochemical Company Japan introduced the first tissue culture commercial product. Shikonin was produced from cell culture of lithospermum erythrorhizon. In 1985, Keto and Janik produced artificial seeds. In 1990, Kranz and others reported electrofusion of isolated male and female gametes of maize and plant regeneration from the fusion product. This is the first demonstration of in vitro fertilization in higher plants. It is quite common for any man-made technology to have its own advantages and disadvantages. Therefore, it will make good sense if we get to know certain advantages of tissue culture over traditional methods of propagation. These include the possibilities of the production of exact copies of the explants that produce, particularly 
good flowers, fruits or other desirable traits. Rapid production of mature plants is also possible. Production of multiple plant types even in the absence of seeds or even in the absence of necessary pollinators to produce seeds. Regeneration of whole plants from plant cells that have been genetically altered. Production of plants with a significantly resistant to pests and disease or pathogens. Production of plants from seeds that otherwise have very low chances of germinating and growing like in the case of orchids. Disinfect certain plants of viral and other infections and to rapidly multiply these plants as cleaned stock for horticulture and agriculture is also possible. Now that we have understood the history of plant tissue culture it is and its evolution and the pupil behind its success and its importance. It is now time to know what plant tissue culture actually is. Plant tissue culture by definition is the aseptic culture of cells, tissues, organs and their components called explants under defined physical and chemical conditions in vitro. It is an important tool in both basic and applied studies as well as in commercial application in the sense that plant tissue culture is widely used to produce clones of a plant in a method known as micropropagation. It is a vital advanced area of applied plant science including agriculture and plant biotechnology. Plasticity and totipotency are the two processes important to understand the regeneration of plants in plant cell culture. Plants due to their non-nomadic nature or sessile nature and long lifespan have developed a greater adaptation the ability to withstand extreme conditions and predation than the animals. So, many of the processes involved in plant growth and development adjust to environmental conditions. This adaptability is otherwise called as plasticity which allows the plants to alter their metabolism, growth and development to best suit their environment. When plant cells and tissues are cultured in vitro they generally exhibit a very high degree of plasticity. This allows one type of tissue or organ to be developed from another type of tissues or organ in culture. In this way, whole plants can be subsequently regenerated. The inherent capacity of a single plant cell to give rise to a whole plant is called the totipotency. Otherwise, the regeneration of a whole plant from a single plant cell provided with the correct stimuli is also called totipotency. Plant tissue culture technique is effective because almost all the plant cell are totipotent. Each cell has the genetic information and cellular machinery necessary to generate the whole organism. Totipotency is generally exposed when cells or tissues are disturbed or removed from their normal environment and placed onto artificial media in tissue culture. Many plants have been regenerated from single cells, but not all plant cells are totipotent that you must remember. Some are terminally differentiated often because of partial or complete loss of genome. We can now say that most plants at most stages of the life cycle have some populations of cells that are totipotent. Totipotency is of course also a property of normal undifferentiated cells for example the meristems. In general the development of an adult organism from a single cell that is from a zygote is the result of the integration of cell division and cell differentiation. Hence the first step in expression of regenerative totipotency for a mature cell is to re-enter the cell cycle and resume cell division. This is known as de-differentiation. This may lead to the formation of shoots or roots then it is called direct organosynthesis or there may be a superseding callus stage from which organized structures can later be induced to develop. 
this is referred to as indirect organogenesis or else directly lead to the development of somatic embryos in such case it is called embryogenesis expression of totipotency depends on the competence of the cells it is the ability of cells to be induced along a particular developmental pathway initially cells display competence to both root or shoot formation later once induction has begun say for shoots cells become determined and transfer to conditions that induce shoot formation and the conditions that normally induce root formation becomes ineffective hope you have a clear picture of what plant tissue culture is and the concepts involved you may now wonder how this culture can be cultivated and maintained this is what we are going to see now the plant tissue culture medium is an artificial nutrient supplement of organic and inorganic nutrients used for cultivation of plant tissues the correct composition of the medium largely regulates the success of the culture the culture media used for the in vitro cultivation of the plant cells are composed of three basic components namely the essential elements or normal ions which are supplied as a complex mixture of salts secondly an organic supplement providing vitamins and amino acids and thirdly a source of fixed carbon which is usually supplied as sucrose when cultured in an appropriate medium having growth regulators such as auxins and cytokines x plants will give rise to an unorganized growing and dividing mass of cells which are being called as callus callus cultures originate from a small part of an organ or tissue segment called the x plants on a growth supporting solidified nutrient medium under sterile conditions x plants can be of any part of the plant organ or tissues at the time of callus formation there is some degree of d differentiation that happens both in morphology and metabolism one of the major concerns of this d differentiation is that most plant cultures lose their ability to perform photosynthesis this in turn demands addition of other components such as carbon and vitamins source to the culture media in addition to the usual mineral nutrients as you are aware an adult plant consists of many cells of uniform shape and specialized function and those cells will be organized to form a tissue such as meristem cortex phloem and epidermis and several such tissues then organized or woven together to form an organ such as leaves roots flowers and the vascular system let us see now what is organogenesis is genesis refers to origin and the process of initiation and development of an organ is called organogenesis in plant tissue culture organogenesis is the process by which cells and tissues are forced to undergo changes which lead to the production of an unipolar structure namely a shoot or root primordium and the formation of individual organs such as shoots or roots in plant tissue culture inducing organogenesis is an important way to regenerate plants and which involves two distinct phases namely the d differentiation and the re differentiation the phenomenon of a mature cell reverting to a meristematic state and forming a d differentiated callus tissue is called d differentiation whereas the ability of d differentiated cell to form a whole plant or plant organs is termed as re differentiation d differentiation begins shortly after the isolation of the explant tissues with an acceleration of cell division 
and a consequent formation of a mass of undifferentiated cells called callus. During this process of de-differentiation, the genes and promoter sites that were earlier inaccessible now become accessible to transcription, eventually to translation as the sections of tightly wrapped heterochromatin are transferred to echromatin. In some more primitive life forms such as worms, the process of de-differentiation happens naturally as part of the regenerative process. For example, when it is cut into two pieces and it has to grow the new parts. Likewise, the phenomenon of conversion of component cells of scalus tissue to plant organs is called as redifferentiation. Organized development leading to plantlet regeneration is a multi-staged process consisting of at least three distinct stages namely shoot bud formation, shoot development and multiplication and the rooting of developed shoots. This can be controlled mostly by a balance between cytokinins and auxins the growth regulators. A relatively high ratio of auxins to cytokinins reduces root formation in callus tissues whereas a low ratio induces suit formation. Callogenesis is a type of organogenesis by which only adventitious shoot bud initiation takes place in the callus tissue. When it is applicable for root, it is known as rhizogenesis. Such anomalous structures developed during organogenesis is called organoids. Redifferentiation will be seen in certain primitive organisms undergoing regeneration. But some vertebrates too can do this. For example, certain lizard, house lizard or garden lizard can lose their tails and grow back new ones. During this process, cells de-differentiate and re-differentiate to produce all the germ layers necessary to properly grow a new tail. Redifferentiation, also called budding in plant tissue culture, may begin any time after the first callus cell forms. In this process of tissue called organ primordial is differentiated from a single or a group of callus cells. The organ primordia give rise to small meristems with the cells densely filled with protoplasm and strikingly large nuclei. The localized meristematic cells on a callus which give rise to shoots and or roots is termed as meristemoid. Plant tissues in vitro may produce many types of primordia, advantageous buds and organs including those that will eventually differentiate into embryos, flowers, leaves, shoots and roots. These primordia originate de novo from a cellular de-differentiation process followed by initiation of a series of events that result in their formation. A developmental sequence involving an intervening callus stage is termed indirect organogenesis. So, the primary explant gives rise to callus, then the callus gives rise to meristemoid and then the meristemoid gives rise to organ primordium. Direct organogenesis is accomplished without an intervening proliferate callus stage. Hence, the primary explant gives rise to meristemoid and uh, the organ primordium is directly gives uh, rise from meristemoid tissues. Conclusion Now that we have come to the end of this topic, let us quickly recall the important points that we can take along with us today. Creation of cell, tissue and organ culture and regeneration of plantlets under in vitro conditions has opened up new opportunities in the area of plant biotechnology. The accomplishment of plant biotechnology depends on the fundamental practices of plant tissue culture. Plant tissue culture techniques are central to advanced areas of applied plant science including plant biotechnology and agriculture. For instance, 
select plants can be cloned and cultured as suspended cells from which plant products can be produced. The development of plant tissue culture as a fundamental science was closely linked with the discovery and characterization of plant hormones. It was simplified our understanding of plant growth and development. Also, the capability to grow plant cells and tissues in culture and to control their development forms the foundation of many practical applications in agriculture, horticulture, industrial chemistry and is a qualification for plant genetic engineering. Understanding basic biology of plants is a prerequisite for proper utilization of the plant system or parts thereof. Mm -hmm.